The other day, I watched an episode of a show called Hoarders. And this is a show that profiles people who have accumulated so much stuff that it has completely overtaken their homes. The conditions these people live in are often tragic and sometimes even dangerous. There was one lady, she didn't even have space for a bed. She slept in a chair. I felt anxiety just watching this show and I can't imagine what it's like to live in a space like that. Minimalism has had the opposite effect on me. Decluttering a lot of my possessions has created space in my life, both in my home and in my head. And today I want to share why owning less can lead to less stress in your life. Having less makes my home feel more visually pleasing. It just looks more put together. Confucius said, life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. Minimalism is a way to make a living space that's gotten complicated, simple again. Now, when I walk into the living room or sit on the sofa, I feel a sense of calm, of inner peace. I own fewer things and the things I do own are organized. For example, when I'm done eating, I will do the dishes immediately afterwards so they don't pile up. Before, something would catch my eye wherever I looked. A cluttered desk, a messy kitchen counter, shelves that needed to be fixed or dusty corners. It was mentally taxing. It would distract me from what I wanted to focus on or it would even drag me down. It was as if it sent me messages. You need to mop the floor or you need to clean the kitchen or clean out that closet. And I remember the feeling because I can still sometimes experience that when I'm visiting other apartments that are full of stuff. The more stuff, the more messages. Maybe you can relate. It's as if you're surrounded by so many menial tasks fighting for your attention that you can't get around to doing the things that are actually important. The easy way out is to just ignore it. But that can also make us feel lazy and unmotivated. After decluttering my living space, I no longer experience that feeling of visual overwhelm. When you own less, you have fewer things to maintain, which frees up time. When we buy something new, we don't always take into account that bringing a new item into our living space, into our lives, requires maintenance. These things, they have wants and needs, they want to be cared for. Clothes need washing, tables need cleaning, a car engine requires regular oil change. There will always be a basic level of maintenance. But a house full of stuff can take up hours of cleaning and organizing each week. And some people have so many tasks that need to get done around the house that they even hire other people to do it for them. By decluttering your possessions and only keeping the things you truly need or care for, you're also reducing the time you would normally spend each week on keeping your living space clean and tidy. As an added bonus, it's also easier to find things. When you have an organized living space, you won't waste time trying to find keys or bank cards or coins. Money is a big stressor in many people's lives. Financial stress is tough, but minimalism can help lower your living expenses. On the same income, this means that you'll have to worry less about how you're going to make ends meet. And it gives you more options. You may now have more money to save or invest, or you can now afford a pay cut, which allows you to leave the stressful job you're in and start a more fulfilling one. As a minimalist, there's also less FOMO or need to keep up with the Jonases. Whereas before I would spend a lot of money on branded clothes or going out, I'm now content with less. The things I care about now don't cost a lot of money. I value control of my time, being creative, and I care a lot less about what people think of me than I did before. If you have a habit of going shopping for fun, minimalism is also a tool that can help you explore why you feel that need. Decluttering isn't necessarily fun and it's a lot of work. So it would be a shame that if you've done it once, that you would have to do it again in six months because you've accumulated so many new things again in the meantime. Not to mention all the money you'd be spending on buying all these new items. Questions you could ask yourself are, do I really need it? Is there something that triggers an impulse purchase? Is it scarcity? What I've learned from listening to Ramit Sethi's podcast, I Will Teach You To Be Rich, is that some people have a scarcity mindset and they buy things because their parents never had any money when they grew up. Now, I'm not immune to this, but when I find myself in a store and I have the clarity of mind to think about it, I will take a deep breath and I'll think about it and run through my head the reasons for buying this item. And more often than not, I come to the conclusion that I don't really need it. It's an impulse buy really more than anything else. I will put it back and save myself the money. So minimalism can help us have less financial stress, giving us more freedom and an overall better quality of life. After I reorganized my living space, I noticed a surprising side effect, a clearer mind. I had more headspace to focus on the things I truly cared about. With a few things vying for my attention, it was easier to make decisions with intention. 
it was as if I had also decluttered my head. Minimalism is about removing excess and distractions to create more space for the things you care about the most. So you can then make better decisions on how to spend your time and money. Going through my living space and decluttering all my stuff taught me that more possessions doesn't correlate with more happiness. Beyond basic necessities and items I truly care about, most other things were simply clutter. And I didn't miss them once they were gone. I also hardly experience any envy or FOMO when I'm in someone else's home. And before, a visit to a well-decorated house of a friend could make me feel bad about my own place and make me want to go on a shopping spree. But after I've gone through everything at home and made a conscious decision about what to keep and what to discard, I am content with what I have. And I can truly enjoy being in someone else's cozy home without having any negative self-talk. It can be difficult to let go of items that hold emotional value to us. And if that piece is something you deeply cherish and that brings you joy, it deserves a permanent place in your living space. But some items can weigh on us emotionally. And minimalism is a tool that can help us reflect on why that is. Is the item bringing you down? Or are you keeping it out of obligation or a sense of guilt? At some point, a family heirloom or an item that reminds you of a bad relationship in a distant past can be more of a burden than anything else. As you begin to declutter the items you feel more neutral about, you become more familiar with evaluating whether or not an item deserves a space in your home. And you will also experience the mental clarity that comes with letting go of things you don't care about and only keeping those you value. And the mindset shift starts to take place. Now it becomes easier to pick up that item that holds emotional value and that you're having trouble letting go of and reflect on what's holding you back. This can conjure up unpleasant feelings. But going through this process and making the decision to let go can lift an incredible weight off your shoulders and bring about a feeling of lightness, which makes it totally worth it. If this is difficult, you may find my video about how to declutter sentimental items helpful, which you can check out right here. In that video, I share three questions you can ask yourself to get more insight into what's holding you back. So thanks for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one and take care. Bye bye.